Hey, are you interested in the market of fucking amazing games? What was that? No? Okay, I guess I, guess I fucked up. I don't know if you ever heard of Lab Zero, creators of that one amazing fighting game called Skullgirls? Nah, I probably never heard of them. I've recently started an Indiegogo campaign for a game called Indivisible. And let me tell you about this disgustingly promising game. You play as the Acnea. I'm probably horrendously mispronouncing that name. A tomboyish karate and axe wielding master who fights these weird creatures that are kinda terrifying. Why are we fighting them? Well, I don't think there's been a statement on that, but I'm just gonna assume that Agnes is a giant racist and hates these creatures just because they're black. The game itself plays like a Metroidvania side-scrolling turn-based RPG fighting game. Yeah, it's rather unique. You see, there's this whole exploration factor relative to a Metroidvania game, but when encountering an enemy, the mechanics shift to this turn-based fighting game style. You see, each button represents an attack for each of your individual characters. Depending on where the character is on screen at the moment, the button will change to represent that. Uh, this demo doesn't really have any sort of experience based leveling up as many other RPG games have. However, the more enemies you destroy, the more characters you get to play with, and you get the ability to make more attacks per turn. Once your characters can attack more than once in a turn, it will be represented by this bar on top of your character's individual health being cut up into more segments. Now that we have that out of the way, sending a character to do an attack imitates the sort of fighting game mechanic you would see in a Super Smooshing Sisters or a Sidewalk Battle Omega. I really don't have any idea if that's true, I've never actually played Street Fighter, but let's just assume so. You see, combat works in the same kind of manner you would execute attack in a fighting game. Press the button for a regular attack, hold up for an error attack, hold down for a ground attack. The amount of damage the attack will do varies on the kind of enemy you're fighting. Each character has one attack variety that will deal damage to multiple enemies on the screen, so memorizing what attack that is and using it at the proper moment is a must. You see, the point of this fighting game style mechanic is to create super sick combos that will then fill up your Edihi meter. This meter dictates when you are able to use your super moves, and more importantly, it allows you to shield. After your turn whooping ass with major combos, your enemy will choose either one of your characters or all of them to attack. However, the shield move can only be used if your Dihi meter is at least a little bit filled up. If you have nothing in your meter, you will proceed to become a humiliation to your parrot and get your ass whooped by these stupid monsters. It happens, it's really annoying. It happens. If you do have something in your meter, however, you can press the character's individual button to block. Blocking carelessly will make your bar go down, which is something you really don't want. What you want is to create a perfect shielding of sorts and hit the shield button exactly when you are being wrecked. This will fill up your meter instead. The characters you get to play with in this demo include the Usopp nose Sebai, the angsty Rasmi, murderer of lions, and the black dude Tongar. He's black. However, the Indiegogo campaign promises many 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 more. Like those. Look at them. They're really cool. Look at that one. Fuck that one. Let's just talk a little bit about something that impressed the hell out of me. You see, at one point after beating this giant ball thing, there is this segment where you see this little platform above you. And no matter what you try, you can't reach it. You try jumping, that shit don't work. You try wall climbing, which between you can wall climb, it's, it's pretty fucking cool. Maybe running at it? Nah. Huh, that's odd, there's a little axe here on the wall, I wonder why that is. Wait a minute. When I got my axe, it was stuck on the wall. And this one's stuck on the wall. But what if I what if I did the holy fucking shit? This is absolutely impossible. How could they have possibly ever figured out good game design? You guys don't get it. You don't fucking get it. This shit turns me the fuck on. That my friend is excellent game design, and it's not something you see that often in current generation games. And that shit makes me fucking erect. They could have easily cheapened the experience by putting some kind of sign up there that will tell you how to climb the walls. Like, oh, here you press this thing, ba do the thing, and do ba 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 ju. But they didn't. They let you figure it out by yourself. Man, this fucking game is better than that shitty AAA game that just came out that recently. Yeah, that one. I haven't even played it, but fuck it. Let me repeat that. A prototype. This game isn't even in beta or alpha or fucking sigma or whatever. It's a prototype. It might as well just be a super fancy concept at the moment. Look, this is such a promising game, but the Indigo campaign has like 7 days left. And they're only like halfway there. And I really really would love this to become an actual thing. If you can support them with as much money as you can, the link will be in the description. As far as I go, I'm just gonna keep playing this game, maybe maybe get a little moisturizer for things get steamy up in this indivisible game. So I'm CL Phoenix Valmon and thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a good day.